Okay, we're back. We're live to talk about energy on, uh, gee, what is it, uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy, here at 4 o'clock on a given Wednesday. Uh, and our special guest is Peter Rusek, spokesman for Hawaiian Electric Company, and we are joined um, by remote uh, <laughs> by Mitch Ewan, who is co-host of this very same program. Hi, guys. Welcome to your show. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Aloha, Jay. So, Peter, we wanted to talk about how Hawaiian Electric is dealing with the coronavirus, uh, the new world of coronavirus, putting it that way. Sure. Because, you know, uh, the electric company is the center of our world, the center of our economy, the center of our community. And it's, it's, we care about you. We want, we want to know how you're doing here. We want to know how you're adapting and what you're learning. Sure, you love us now that you need us. Uh, no, uh, clearly, <laughs> clearly, you know, we are. We may not be the center of all of all the universe here, but we're essential to pretty much everybody's way of life. Yes. So the first thing I got to tell you right off the bat is we're in full operation. Hawaiian Electric is uh, working on all islands. We have ample fuel, uh, other supplies. We have deliveries coming in regularly. Uh, we're not like the grocery store where you can't get a, a box of pasta. Uh, we have all, you know, we have people in our power plants working. We have people working in our system operations center. We have just people out in the field doing uh, routine and, and emergency repairs. Uh, you have a lot of things to worry about right now, but you don't have to worry about your, uh, your electricity service. We uh, prepare for these kinds of things locally and with a lot of support from some of our national organizations. We train for them. Uh, not so much until now for this specific kind of thing, but for tsunamis and hurricanes and, and weather and so forth. And there, there are obviously some similarities and some differences. We stood up what we call our, our uh, we have a, a, an emergency management process uh, and we have stood that up, which means that, uh, you know, all the, all the planning and work that is focused on this uh, problem go through a central office and we have uh, those facilities are our command. So uh, we are in we're we're in good shape. Uh, we are confident. We have we have enough power. Some people have been asking, well, all these people working at home is is going to strain your your system. Well, this time of year we have a lot of extra capacity because it's not August or or September when uh, the air conditioners are running. But we have. Uh, Obviously, we're going to have a lot less demand from offices, restaurants, unfortunately, bars and, and other things uh, are not going to, going to be demanding so much. So uh, we're, we're in good shape. We have no, uh, you know, unusual worries. We got to keep, uh, you know, we keep track of our system. We have to respond to various weather related outages. Kauai right now, not part of our system, but Kauai is going through some pretty heavy flooding right now, which uh, they they are prepared to deal with as well. So uh, it, it's kind of, it's pretty much business as as usual as far as our customers are concerned on their side of the plug. Uh, what has changed is that we are uh, asking people or telling people don't come and pay your bill in person. Mm. Uh, pay it on online. Pay it by mail. There are a variety of ways to pay it, and this is important because we th we know that in the uh, in the coming days and weeks, some people are going to have more trouble than usual paying their electric bill. So we're not going to do any disconnections whatsoever for the next 30 days. Um, and uh, we're encouraging people, if they have a problem, uh, paying their bill, paying their bill in full, don't just ignore it. Give us a call and go to the website, uh, look in the phone book. You'll find some phone numbers. Call us and say, look, I'm, I'm having a problem. Uh, what can we work out? And we will do our best to work out partial payments or uh, whatever we can do to get you through this crisis. We're donating some money to uh, extra money more than usual to Aloha United Way and the food bank. But on a customer to, to, to business relationship, if you have a problem paying your, your utility bill, call us. It's much better to call and say, I've got a problem than to ignore it, and then we don't know whether you're a deadbeat or you have a real problem. <laughs> and uh, we'll do everything we can. Don't forget, you're going to ultimately have to pay for all this. It's not a forgiveness, but it is. Uh, it can be deferred. We can work on payment plans. We can talk to you about uh, ways you may get help if you're in certain kinds of circumstances. 
I, so, I can see this all puts a, a certain amount of pressure on you because the economy is slowing down. I mean, uh, we had Keith Vieira in, uh, you know, he's a hotel guy. Right. And um, this is, the hotels are closing and they're not operating and all the ancillary businesses are closing or, or limiting or stopping and um, including a lot of restaurants and bars and what have you. And they're not going to be turning the lights on, you know. Absolutely right. And so, uh, you know, that's the reality we are living with in our society right now. Uh, we, we will have lower sales invariably, I think. One small bright spot on the horizon, if you've been following oil prices lately, uh, they're down around $20 a, a, a barrel. That's remarkable. And it is remarkable. And who knows how long it'll last since the Russians and the Saudis finally get over the, their tiff, it may change again. But the point is that within the next two or three months, uh, bills should be going down just because we're using less expensive oil to generate the 70 or so percent of the electricity that we still get from oil. And it, the rest increasingly is, is uh, uh, renewable energy that's not tied to the price of oil. So that's a small glimmer of hope, but you're, you're absolutely right. We are uh, you know, we're girding for uh, a down, downturn in sales. And so we're going to be confronting that reality too. smaller sales and a lot of people who can't pay their bills. Uh, there could be cash flow situations. I'm not in that, uh, you know, I'm not privy to all that, but I'm sure we're planning for the eventuality that we might have that. Uh, we have to pay our suppliers to keep the oil sure. and the other supplies sure. coming. Those are, uh, yeah, but fixed, you know, yeah. they're fixed costs. And uh, but you know, this is not just a local problem; it's a worldwide problem. So uh, we're all we're all kind of in this together in this weird way. Uh, but it's definitely going to be some difficult times ahead for everybody to keep their head above water. And we're going to do all we can uh, to be a solution and not a problem in that. Uh, as I said, you know, we're going to try to help people with bills um, if we can. We're going to we're we're still operating at full strength on things like our customer uh, customer installations departments, contractors. We've communicated with all of them. We're about to communicate with all the solar contractors who we work with uh, throughout the state and actually throughout the country, and tell them we're still processing your applications. We're still. Uh, moving forward so that if you have a construction project that depends on some electricity uh, infrastructure or approvals or whatever, we don't we don't want to be the we're not going to be the one that's in the way of moving that forward. So the businesses that we can support, uh, we are going to support by uh, working very hard to make all of our our time schedules. And if uh, we can be a little bit lenient on some of their time schedules, we're going to try to do that. So, you know, we got to look to the businesses like construction that can go forward now uh, and make sure that the electric company is not an obstacle to that happening, that they're not waiting for their, uh, their, their transformer to be put in so they can finish the building or, uh, you know, whatever it may be. And for, social, for solar contractors, we're not going to be holding up things. We're going to try our best to be uh, right on time in terms of getting their approvals back to them. So they can go ahead and send their workers out, pay their workers, uh, collect their, their money. So in the areas that we can have an influence, we can't help the restaurant that has to close, we can't help the hotel where, the, where visitors don't come, but there are businesses that depend on us very directly and we're going to do all we can to make sure that they are able to do their business successfully. Yeah, it's a test of corporate character right now, I think we're in. Test of character in general for all of us. I think we're all going to be tested in the coming weeks and months. But uh, and here again, you know, we've talked before about a new CEO. Not that the old CEO wouldn't have been just as good, but Scott Sue is uh, very much involved in the community and he's very, very aware of, of our impact. He's been out in the community a lot on resilience projects and uh, he's been, you know, since he's been appointed and uh, he's been out meeting people, out talking to people in the company, and and um, he has the advantage of knowing our company very, very well. Uh, and the people in the company know him very, very well. And he he's known as a serious, conscientious person uh, who is is uh, you know going to put the community and the the company uh, put those interests together in the same 
in the same pot. He went to Kamehameha Schools, uh, big family here, uh, very much the local boy. Alan Oshima also, I don't want to take anything away from Alan who, who has done great and would be great today, but Scott, I think it, we all agree, is particularly uh, in tune with, with a lot of these things. He's just a conscientious, thoughtful guy, uh, and he's going to make sure we come through this uh, in a way that, that reflects well on our company and that, you know, we'll all be proud of at the end. We did everything we could. So that's good. Let me make a couple of other points, if you will. Sure. Um, for customers right now, if you're not online and uh, paying online, uh, this is a good time to go to hawaiianelectric.com, follow the instructions. You can get your bills online. You can communicate online. That way you don't have to, uh, you know, you certainly don't have to come into the, our payment centers. Um, you can use that if you are uh, if you haven't downloaded our app, which I'm always promoting. Hawaiian Electric. You can go to the Google Store or the Apple Store, get the Hawaiian Electric app for free. You can follow outages. You can be you can report outages. You can find out where that's where we tend to put most of the kind of short term announcements about things that are going on. I think all of us are going to come out of this experience, as you were saying, you know, a lot more people will be staying home after this. I think a lot of us are going to be much more aware of what we can do online, that we don't have to uh, be outside, be, to be in groups of people, be in offices that are small and where we have a chance of infecting others or being infected. So this is a great opportunity uh, for customers to do that. You can pay your bills online. You can get a lot of information online. You can also follow outages, report outages through these various uh, online devices. And we would be thrilled. I mean, it frankly saves us money, which we can pass sure. back to people. It, 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 it purports, it goes further to efficiency. And, and uh, I think it also uh, brings the electric company and the community together. This is a time when we have to work together. And at the end of the day, we'll probably understand each other a little better. Well, I hope so. I think you're right. And, and we're, we are, for our part, we're certainly aware of the fact, you know, we're a big company. People, people get their bills every month and probably mumble, grumble a little bit about it, and we don't blame them. But we, we are all in this together, and, and this is a company. Uh, you know, I've been there for 20 years now, but the company's been there for 128 years now. and it's You don't look that old at all. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's because of... It's good no, living, good living. What is it? Anyway, it's, I can't touch my face, so I can't tell you exactly Please don't why. touch yeah. your face. No. Anyway, uh, this is a company that is, is literally, you know, all about Hawaii. It's, been, it's uh, locally owned and operated. It's all the managers. Everybody lives here. Um, this is the most local company I've, I've ever worked for, uh, local in the best sense, both in the kind of way people interact with each other and in the sense of, our responsibility for this society. And as we said before, I mean, except for a couple of people who are sleeping under bridges, everybody depends on the utility for their electric service, for watching this program, for keeping their food cold, and, uh, heating it up and shower, all everything that we all know about. And we are very, very con aware of that and try to be very conscientious mm -hmm. about making sure that we, we live up to that responsibility. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's not just talk, although I'm a talker, uh, it's not just talk. It weighs on our, uh, our, our weighs very heavily on us every day. And, and uh, we take it quite seriously. We try to joke about it a little bit so we don't get all It's consistent you know, with everything morbid. I've seen. So uh, uh, Peter Rossig, a spokesman uh, for Hawaiian Electric, uh, and Mitch Ewan, our co-host here on uh, Hawaii State of Clean Energy. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back in half a minute. And, uh, and Mitch, uh, I'd like you to follow up with uh, whatever comes to mind on, on uh, Peter's discussion. We'll be right back. Okay, we're 
We're back. We're live. We're here with Peter Rosick and Mitch Ewan uh, talking about Hawaii, the state of clean energy, getting a handle on, on how the uh, electric utility, how Hawaiian Electric is dealing with the corona crisis. Uh, so, Mitch, you had some thoughts you'd like to ask Peter about? Well, I'll make, uh, make a comment first, and then we can go along with that. First of all, you know, a big shout out to the Hawaiian Electric employees who show up on time when they're needed. You know, they may not be, I'm sure they don't show up if they're feeling sick, but thank God they do and keep the lights on and the air conditioning on and everything we rely on. And the other point is that um, if we didn't have a, a good, reliable electricity system, like especially now, we could not have the choice of, or we'd have the choice, but we could not work at home. So the effect on the economy by not having electricity to be online and do your business out of the out of your house rather than exposing yourself really uh, rests on the shoulders of the employees of uh, Hawaiian Electric. So uh, without trying to be uh, too uh, gratuitous, uh, I just want to shout out to Hawaiian Electric and like uh, Jay said, and you know, it's not the big bad old utility. I mean, like you said, they're all part of the family. They support us, and uh, well, I, for one, am very uh, grateful that I can uh, be here in the comfort of my house and still do my my day-to-day -day work uh, without getting laid off. Uh, like a lot of employees, like you said, are, are are being laid off, and that's really really bad. I mean, that's really a sad and uh, fortunate okay. people. So anyway, thank you for that. Thank um, you, Mitch. I appreciate that, and I know if you know. Our 2,000 employees who are all watching at this no well who if they were watching at this moment uh, they would they would appreciate it too. I will say we have I think we estimate seven or eight hundred of our employees right now are working from home, uh, getting you know kind of breaking in the system to allow them to do that. We are a very technological company in that respect, and we've long had the ability, but we've never had this volume of people working from home teleconferencing and you know it it comes along if i may say just at the time when we we're kind of finishing this one company um, move so uh, we were already doing a lot more teleconferencing because departments have people on all three of the major islands and so forth and now that combined with the with working from home uh, is uh, i think it's going to change the way we work in the future but uh, we really encourage other people to, to do that to the extent they can. Yeah, that, your comment about changing how we work, I think, is a huge issue. I mean, people are going to be doing this for quite a long time, probably. And we're going to adjust how we do our work. And I think we'll become much more efficient. So instead of spending, you know, an hour on the road in traffic, we can have more productive time at home. We're not going to be crowding the roads with more cars. So maybe that'll reduce uh, con traffic congestion, uh, emissions, uh, a whole uh, variety of things. Uh, maybe the requirement for a company to have so much office space, they can look at that and say, you know, we had uh, uh, shared offices and, and uh, staggered times. You know, we wouldn't have to invest so much in our rent and all the other things. That, it takes to uh, keep an office open. So I, I can see this. I see it from the university level is basically uh, in my own personal uh, thing. I, I just I show up to the office. I work behind a computer, basically. Uh, interaction with people in the hallways is good because some of the best ideas uh, come out of uh, these uh, unplanned uh, meetings in the hallway. So I think you still have to keep that component in. You can't just totally walk away from the office and never show up. Um, you, you still have to have those interactions. Maybe they can be planned interactions like brainstorming sessions where people just get together, you know, in a morning uh, once or twice a, a week or a month and just talk about things and get that, you know, input from everybody around the table because, you know, that's why human beings interact so well is like, Everybody's got an idea and a slant to put on things. But I think this will certainly make people look harder at that business model. So um, it's, it's like, you know, remember in 08 when oil was up about, uh, uh, you know, what was it per barrel? $150 a barrel or pushing that. And, the, and the, uh, the, the level of traffic dropped dramatically, like 20, 25%. But once the oil kind of uh, leveled back out to its normal around $80 a barrel, 
it, it didn't spring back that 25%. I think the policy forum, who is our sponsor for the show, got to get a plug in for the forum, uh, they found out through uh, one of their surveys they did that really uh, net overall, there was about a 10% reduction um, in uh, the level of traffic after the event, that event uh, was over. So uh, we'll have to see how, like you said, how this factors out. Like, does everybody actually need to show up just to show up? Yeah, we human beings seem to need a, a tragedy or a, a disaster or a catastrophe. Uh, and then we change into ways that we kind of knew before we should or we could, but we just kind of didn't get around to it. So I think human nature being what it is, I, I'm sure there will have be a lasting effect uh, from all this. And, and uh, I think that'll be... We'll see, but I, you're right, we still can't, we still have to have human interaction and maybe it has to be a little more focused, and a little more planned. Uh, we have to use the electronic media to, uh, you know, to have some of these things you can have now with Skype and with other kinds of things you can have uh, get together, so to speak, and uh, with uh, people online. But I think you're still gonna have to have a, a, a reasonable level of interaction with human beings face-to-face, uh, -face. and I think a good balance is what we're going to be seeking. So there have been, a, you know, a lot of proceedings going on at the PUC, a lot right. of, you know, deadlines running, you know, processes, legal processes, contractual processes. You spoke about dealing with contractors before, but I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the projects, the big projects, uh, the renewable projects, everything in the pipeline, so to speak. Um, and I wonder, you know, the I don't know if the PUC is shut down like the courts, maybe it is, um, but the state government is essentially shut down, even the legislature. And so I wonder how that affects all the initiatives that have been going on uh, as a matter of course between the electric company and you know various uh, contractors and proposers and developers and the like, and the PUC, how, how does that affect this? Well, I think the PUC, because it is uh, the regulator of our utility and the other utilities that are essential to daily life uh, is probably a little bit different than, than the legislature. I know there was a meeting yesterday morning at the Public Utilities Commission where we were asked to uh, talk about what we were doing in terms of customer facing communications and how we were dealing with people and we told them about uh, these kinds of things that I've been telling you about, the decision not to uh, do any, any uh, disconnections uh, the things we're doing to reach out to people who may not be able to pay their bills, how we were talking to co to contractors and so forth. So I, I don't know about the staff, and I would I would assume that if there are people at the PUC who can work from home as there are at Hawaiian Electric and other places, then many of them are doing that. But I think the commission itself uh, sees its role as not uh, a, a job where they can say, oh, well, uh, you know, we're, we're going to close down and not, not worry about this till later. I think they're very much involved. I think I know the, the people who are now commissioners, uh, Jay Griffin and, and uh, who's the chair and others are not the kind of people who will say uh, hands off and we're not going to worry about oh, it. Yeah. They're, they're going to be very hands on. I, you know, some schedules uh, are perhaps going to be uh, elongated. They're obviously, there are there's the possibility that some of these timelines will slip, but I think to the extent that we can avoid that, uh, we're going to try to avoid it. We have and we promised in May to uh, announce another round of renewable con of renewable projects and to begin negotiations with those companies on final contracts. I can't I can't say with absolute certainty that it'll happen exactly on the day we expect it, but I believe we'll go forward and we because we we have to we need to uh, we need to get our our dependence even on cheap oil uh, down further over the next few years. And uh, so that's going to go forward. There are going to be inevitably some things going forward that can't be controlled and that will be delayed. I don't doubt that uh, that will happen. But we're committed to being as, you know, operating as near to normal as possible, given the circumstances. And we have the facilities to do much of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're committed to being as close to normalcy as we possibly can and to but at the same time giving our customers and giving our contractors and giving the people we work with every break we can to because they may not have uh, 
massage or the ability to, to deal with things the way we can. But, but you know, Peter, uh, you know, the, everybody makes these um, expectations on how long this virus uh, crisis is going to last. Uh, 30 days, a lot, of, a lot of organizations and executives and officials say 30 days and they're planning for that horizon. Some, some will say 60 or 90 days. Um, nobody knows for sure. Nobody Absolutely knows. Absolutely not. Uh, and it depends on so many things, including scientific things that we really don't have a handle on. So my question is, I mean, how do you deal with the possibility this is going to be longer than 30 days or 60 or 90 or 120? Uh, you know, I, you guys are really the center of our economy, uh, such as it is, the center of our life here in these islands, the center of getting up in the morning. Um, you got a plan for an extended period? Well, that's why we set up the emergency management process. And part of that is to plan for tomorrow, and part of that is to plan for the future. And, you know, we can't see too far out, we, but we can, uh, we can look at what is the worst case scenario. What if this is, a, uh, you know, what if it is six months and how, how will that be affected? Uh, there are obviously huge numbers of unknowns here. It's the novel coronavirus and nobody's ever dealt with this or a, a pan, I think a pandemic of this uh, magnitude. So there's a lot we don't know, but what we can do is take some very smart people who we have on our, uh, on our team and say, what do we need to know for tomorrow? on the week to come and the week after that, and we'll plan no disconnections for 30 days. And before that expires, we'll look at it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of like all we can do, but we do have people who have trained and who have planned for these kinds of contingencies. And we have also very good resources in terms of knowing what's going on, both local and from our national organizations, people who will be telling us and showing us what other utilities are doing. Uh, so. You know, I, I will guarantee you there'll be mistakes. Uh, I guarantee you we will not be on top of everything that's, that happens, but we will, it won't be for lack of trying. It won't be for lack of working at it. Uh, that's why we use the emergency management. We call it an incident management team. Uh, that's why we use this process so we can kind of shed some of the, 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 the distractions and make sure we know exactly who's responsible for today, tomorrow, and, and, and whatever the future may bring. That's and great, Peter. We'll do our best. We'll it's do great our that best. you come down and talk to us about it, too. We want um, to follow it. We'll be you. back anytime, because I think information is absolutely critical. I agree. So, Mitch, uh, you have the uh, enviable task of summarizing and saying goodbye. Can you do that? Okay, well, I'll quickly summarize. It looks like uh, Hawaii Ele Hawaiian Electric is on top of the situation right now. I think uh, people don't have to stress out about their energy bills. Like Peter said, we're not gonna cut your lights off. So don't stress out about that. Uh, the workforce is coming in every day and doing their job. Thank you very much for doing that. You can work from home and maybe be more efficient. And I think that's it. As you said, make my exits short and sweet. So aloha everyone. We're out of here. Mitch Ewan. Aloha. And Peter Rossi, thank, thank you, you gentlemen. Thanks very much. Take care. Aloha. aloha, wash your hands. Stay safe, stay well. Stay well.